The Mike McDonald era has officially begun in Seattle, and it started with a win over the Denver Broncos. The defense was lights out, but the offense was, well, confusing. So let's look at what went wrong in the first half, the adjustments that Ryan Grubb made to make it better in the second half, and most importantly, if this is all sustainable. If we're going to talk about the issues that this offense faced in the first half, the conversation really begins and ends with the offensive line. Charles Cross was good, really good actually, but the guards and the right tackle, well, they all struggled. I think the first two plays of the game are great examples of just how disastrous this offensive line was, particularly in that first half. On the very first play of the game, the Seahawks are running the air raid concept of Y Cross. The design of this concept is to attack the middle of the defense with the shallow cross from the tight end, followed by this dig route. And as you can see on this play, the shallow cross is doing a great job of pulling the coverage to clear out the space for that dig route. This looks great. But the issue is that by the time Gino should be throwing this ball, he's already being taken down to the ground. The next play is even worse. Here Gino is working the sail concept to the bottom of our screen. Lockett is the alert on this play and he's running the deep post and he will clear out the space for JSN on the sail concept. If you want to blame Gino for not throwing the ball to JSN here, I can totally get that. He's absolutely open. But I also really don't blame Gino for wanting to throw the post. Lockett has great leverage and there's no deep safety. I think we've all seen Gino and Lockett make these types of plays and this is the perfect look. Unfortunately, this offensive line lets him down again. Despite Gino stepping up in the pocket to try to find space, he was hit low as he threw and the ball was picked. That was just a taste of what the day was like for Gino. The pressure was quick and the pressure was relentless. And when the Broncos did get pressure, it was almost immediate pressure, which that just completely destroys plays. Beyond that, the run game never really got going in the first half. The Hawks averaged under two and a half yards per carry. The Broncos really did come ready to defend the run. And from the Seahawks perspective, there were numerous mistakes on the blocking assignments, and it just never really looked like it was all flowing correctly. All in all, the first half was a disaster. The Seahawks literally had two safeties in that first half. Sure, there was the one touchdown drive, but I think that was more just Geno and DK and Lockett all making great plays than really any sort of fixed offense. So how did Ryan Grubb fix this offense for the second half? It started with more of a commitment to the ground game. In the first drive of the second half, K-9 ran the ball five times with Geno just throwing once and that worked to get the Hawks a touchdown from that drive. Schematically, not a ton changed, but there were definitely some improvements. I think the Hawks ran a little bit more downhill with more variety in the second half as compared to the first half. I also think that Grubb did a much better job of getting the offensive line on the move, and that helped K-9 tremendously. But a lot of it came down to the better execution as well. K-9 did K-9 things, and he had 53 rushing yards on that first drive alone. From a passing perspective, I think that Grubb made some really smart changes to get the ball out of Geno's hands faster. Let's look at probably one of my favorite plays of the day, both from a scheme and an execution standpoint. This play is basically the NFL equivalent of the ISO play in basketball. Grubb has four of his eligibles aligned to one side to give Lockett as much space as possible to work with. This puts so much stress on the defender, and even though the free safety does a pretty solid job of getting over to that side, the pass is simply too good. Despite Stone Forsyth barely being able to get a hand on this edge rusher, Gino is able to get the ball out, and this is a fantastic pass. I'm going to call this a hinge route. It could just be an adjustment to the ball, but regardless, Gino puts the ball where only Lockett can make a play on it, and Lockett does. This is a big time throw, being able to take the ball all the way across the field, even with the rush coming in a hurry, Gino just delivers a strike. The scheme to manufacture this matchup and the execution is simply excellent, and this is what it takes to overcome the offensive line struggles. The entire team really did step up in the second half, and to be clear, the offensive line did too. Unlike the first half, in the second half, there were some plays where Gino had time, and that really allowed this offense to show its true potential. Let's look at this one where the protection, the scheme, and the execution all came together for a touchdown. This is a very popular NFL concept known as Mesh Rail. Mesh is a staple at all levels of football because it has great answers against man coverage and zone coverage. 
The two shallow crossing routes are great against man coverage, and the sit route over the ball is the answer against zone. But with the boundary corner coming to guard the sit route, Charbonnet is left with a ton of grass as he runs this wheel route. Gino does a great job of buying time from the pocket, and thanks to good enough protection from the offensive line, he's able to make a beautiful throw. Sure, this is mostly just a coverage bust, but trust me, Gino would not have had the time to do this the way the offensive line was playing in the first half. At the end of the day, I still have pretty big concerns about this offense, but let's talk about the positives first. This run game looks like it will be dynamic. K9 in the system is going to be so much fun to watch, and I would expect more big games from him. The variety and the complexity of this run game under Ryan Grubb is probably the most marked difference I've seen with this offensive coordinator change, and I'm just really excited to see where this all goes. But the pass protection still has to be concerning. There's no other way to talk about it. If the Seahawks are going to have the pass protection like it was in the second half, that'll be fine. But if your game looks anything like the first half, well, the offense is just going to completely stall. I think that there's even more that Ryan Grubb could do to help mitigate this. A play action percentage of only 11% is really low, and that's something you could definitely look to boost up to help support this offensive line. You could also consider letting Christian Haynes get the start at either guard spot to see if he is something better. Plus, hopefully Abe Lucas should be coming back at some point in the season, so reinforcements should be coming. I still believe in this offense, but if it is going to live up to its potential, the offensive line needs to play more consistently. I know that this is just week one, but as excited as I am about the ground game and how easily Ryan Grubb made all the necessary adjustments, I will be watching this offensive line very closely because that is really going to be the pivotal factor for this entire offense.